Congratulations, everyone. You won a free ticket to Europe uh, for the next 30 minutes, I guess. And I'm your tour guide. So, but let me inform you first. I will tackle you or challenge you with five statements throughout my talk. So the first statement is, we are addicted, all of you. I'm not talking about coffee, alcohol, nicotine, because this is a smoking-free, non-alcohol, non-coffee ride that we're taking. I'm talking about legal addiction that we all suffer from. What do, I, what do I mean with legal addiction? I mean that we are all abide by laws, no matter who you are, if you're a federal person, if you're an operator, if you're a vendor, or if you're a consumer. So there are laws all around us, and we have to stick to them. Right? Am I right? Everyone agrees? I do see. Yeah, good. OK, coming to my next statement. We all love digitization, don't we? Oh, OK, see, heads up, good. So what do I mean with digitization? So throughout our daily business, we're, at least me, I'm a very lazy person. I love to have some comfort while working. And you in the OT field, you don't do everything by hands nowadays. You have automation, and this is really required. But as a federal person, I can tell you I know how to entertain myself with paperwork, and I know how to entertain others. But I love digitization. And the question is, is everything that we are currently using, no matter in the OT field, or as a federal person, or as a private person, as a consumer, is it designed with security in mind? And this is actually one question that the EU is asking. And therefore, they decided after, like the solar winds, like Emotet, like WannaCry, like the satellite hacks, are products safe in terms of security safe in the EU? And now the EU is demanding the so-called defective detectives. So the EU asks, is there security by design in any product? How about patches, updates? I mean, in the OT environment, <laughs> can be really tough, right? And do we need market surveillance in order to have secure products? With this, I'm coming already to my next statement, and we are heading towards the EU. We are already there. We are already in the European, or nearly in the European Union. And sometimes, I don't like the statement, we have no alternative. What I'm, do I mean with no alternative? I will now talk about one of the most addictive drugs, the so-called CRA. It is Cyber Resilience Act. It has some similarities with crack, at least the first three letters. The Cyber Resilience Act is a new legislation that will enter into force in the European Union. And whenever you do any business or want to do any business in the EU, you have to be aware of that one. The CRA will affect all devices with digital elements. In contrast to the NIST 2, are you aware of the NIST 2? Please raise your hand. Yes. Oh, wow, cool. So the NIST 2 has to be transposed into national law. The Cyber Resilience Act is an act, and it is immediately enforceable. So there is no way out. You have no alternative, I promise you. So having that in mind, and having told you that the EU is thinking about the security of products that we are using, no matter if we are consumers, vendors, or operators, we need a horizontal market access regulation. And this is exactly what CRA aims for. OK, you're with me. So CRA is one of the first legislation from the, national, um, from the legislative framework that focuses on security, particularly on security. So what are the implications that CRA brings to you? So first of all, I don't have my glasses on me, but I I'm have fake glasses, the basically vendor glasses now on. So you have to have requirements. So there are requirements across the whole life cycle of every product that you bring on the market in the European Union. 
um, those requirements are related to the properties of the products. This is one part of CRA. So CRA demands any vendor, anyone who is, or who puts any product in the European Union on the market has to stick to it and has to fulfill these requirements. The other side, the second part of CRA, is the focus, so I'm changing my glasses, you don't see that, but I'm telling you, um, from a consumer perspective, that users want to have minimum information. Why is that? Because we have realized in the European Union having a smart robot that is scanning your house might also scan your movement profiles or might function as, for example, a botnet or as part of a botnet. So we have seen several hacks, we have seen several problems, we have seen several products that are insecure, that are talking to whatever cloud you can imagine. And this is what is really concerning, and therefore we have CRA and its implications. The last questions here on this slide, okay, what happens if CRA is now into force? How about the availability of products? Are there any products available in the European Union anymore? Or do we have a shortage of certain products because of CRA? How about your reputation as a vendor, for example? You are selling products, you're bringing products on the market and they have security problems and they are this little robot that is talking to whatever cloud. What are your costs, your invest? What do you have to invest in order to fulfill all these requirements? These are very good questions and I hope to chat with you after my talk about that. But one thing I can definitely tell you is the implication of having vulnerability management. So, 29,065. 29,065 is not my monthly salary, unfortunately. It's the number of confirmed vulnerabilities over the years, and this is really, I mean, this is data. I'm really a scientist, I trust in data. And this is what the EU has seen as well. So the number of vulnerabilities just grew enormously. So it is really hard to handle everything manually, to check every single vulnerability, every single product, that you have in your infrastructure for vulnerabilities and then do risk management, do prioritization, evaluation whatsoever. It just consumes lots of human brain resource. So this is why, and no matter how CRA will look like in the end, because we are not sure yet, sorry for that, but this one definitely goes into it. So vulnerability handling and reporting obligations are definitely one thing you have to face in Europe. So that means, just in five words, you should have a process in place, you should address and remediate vulnerabilities and provide security updates. I think it's quite challenging in some fields. And you have reporting obligations similar to NIST 2 and you have to have a software bill of materials. Coming to my fourth statement. I think this is a very basic human need and we need security. As we are still on our plane, on our party bus to the European Union, I would like to have my crew to stand up to present our security cards because we have security cards with us Please step by and get one. So regarding security, you want to protect yourself, right? So get armed. So you need a bomb, which is an essential requirement. It's called an S-bomb. So the question is, who of you wants to play with a bomb? Please raise your hand. Oh, volunteers, good. So, Actually, the question or the answer is pretty simple. Who wants to play with a bomb? It's the S bomber. So, probably we are all S bombers because vendors have to provide S bombs 
Operators might use those SBOMs provided for their asset management, for SBOM matching management, for vulnerability management, using the SBOM information and the market surveillance, which might be a federal institution. I don't know. We can ask you, like, hey, your product looks fishy. Would you mind providing your SBOM, please? This is a very kind question, and I think it can be different. On top of it, we will have a European vulnerability database, which is then feeded by several market surveillance authorities and by vulnerability reportings that might pop up during this surveillance um, process. So what you can do, or what happens usually is, sorry, something went wrong, right? And it can happen all the time. And it can happen with any product at any time, because statistically, um, in every thousand lines of code, there is at least one vulnerability, or even more, and it can be security relevant. So it could have been exploited already, or it can be exploited later. So what you have to do is you have to have an asset management in order to know what you're playing with. You have to identify vulnerabilities, and you have to say sorry, because we are all polite, right, aren't we? So you have to publish security advisories, and you have to publish them in a machine-readable format. And this is already burned into the CRA. Those demands are there. I'm not a lawyer. I told you I'm a scientist. But whatever, you, you can read it differently. But believe me, some of these buzzwords are already in the regulation. So do you have a pet? Anyone having pets? Oh, good. I also have one with me here. His name is Jack, Jack of all trades. And with every pet, you give strange names to your pets, right? Don't you? I do. So actually, his name is not Jack. His name is CSEF. And CSEF stands for Common Security Advisory Framework. Why am I telling you this? Because I'm telling you something about legislation, about upcoming regulation in Europe, but I need to tell you a solution or a pos possible solution to be compliant to actual and upcoming regulation. And this is why I present my pet, CSEF, to you. So CSEF exactly fulfills these requirements that are, I told you, burnt into legislation already. It is machine readable. And we have various open source tools available, and we are heavily working on that to promote this even further. The beauty of CSEF is that it not only contains vulnerability information, like an ASBOM or a classical advisory, but it contains the advisory information and the remediation information. It is automatable, so remember this curve, 29,065 not my monthly income, but the number of vulnerabilities disclosed last year. How can you tackle this? How can you become resilient to just do all this work and delegate it? Because it does not scale to do it manually. It just does not scale. So you need automated retrieval. You need automated comparison. You need to have an asset management. And we need to work on that. OK. I think you all agree, right? So, this is the fifth statement, right? So we all need aims, and aims are not necessarily ai -ms. They can be goals, so we have to have a destination. Um, when I talk about our goals and the big picture in the end, I can tell you about the European way to resilience, that we don't need drugs and we don't need weapons. But what we need is, we need to know how we play with respect to CRA, the upcoming legislation. We all need to know what we are playing with. We need to know the ingredients of our product cake. Yeah? You can't bake a product without knowing what, what are the ingredients. So you have to know the SBOM, basically, yeah? 
Your S-bomb contains flour, eggs, sugar, butter. It makes a cake, it makes a product. End of story. And as I said, we are all polite, so we need to say sorry. We need to, we need to tell people if something went severely wrong and what they have to do in order to be resilient. Because this is one of the big aims. So now you can tell me, well, Dina, sorry, I'm not a drug addict. I don't take crack. I'm not compliant to CRA because I'm not interested in the European Union. I'm not selling my products there. I don't have any business in the EU. So, fine. Don't argue with me. But the consequence is no EU. So neither distribution nor any business there. So just summing up, if you have any business or want to have any business in the EU, you have to comply to CRA. So coming to an end, um, what I've seen here is a very small and pretty well-connected community. And um, I, it is my first time here, and um, I just met people. I'm now greeting people in the morning, although it started yesterday, and it feels a bit like a big family. So I think there is good potential to do things together with security in mind and to work on risk management, better asset management, to speak openly, to provide transparency to users, to everyone, and to also work on a vulnerability management process, however it might look like. I think there are many solutions. So I kindly ask you to publish security advisories as vendors, and I kindly ask you as users and consumers to read security advisories and use this information for your resilience. So, summing this up, I can tell you in the EU, we love crack and bombs, and we love advisories, so in order to become really resilient and in order to fulfill upcoming and actual legislation and also be NIST 2 compliant and CRA compliant and whatever comes up compliant, demand and promote CSAF and this will help you to fulfill everything that is there and coming. So with this, I would like to end our short trip to the EU. The exits are on the right side. Thank you.